the National Electrical Contractor, 700 members. What do you think of this strike? Um, how are you, Joe? How are you? Good, thanks. Um, I've been listening great, with great interest, Joe. I'd like to point out a number of points first uh, in, in your last speakers. Firstly... This is Eamon Devoy, the yes. General Secretary designate of the Technical Engineering and Electrical Correct. Union. Yeah. Firstly, the Labour Court did reject a 1 euro 5% increase last February, okay? That is a fact. I was there in the Labour Court for 13 days, okay? That is a fact. What's a 1 euro 5% increase one, mean? 1 euro 5 cent per hour oh, five cents, on, on, the, on the hourly rate. Per hour, okay. Yes, the Labour Court did reject that. The Labour Court recommended in their recommendations that all parties, including any party who is representing electrical contractors, be afforded the opportunity to enter talks whereby with the, the industry... With enter, the union? Yes, enter talks with the union. So now, how did your talks with the union go? We were not afforded the opportunity, Joe. NECI were not afforded okay, the opportunity. Okay, Eamon, why would you not negotiate with the NECI? There's no such organisation. Uh, Dennis George has appointed himself chief executive of an, of an, of an organisation that doesn't exist. There are two registered employer bodies. You have to be registered to be a trade union within, and have a negotiating licence. And employers are the same. OIBEC is a trade union and the CIF is a trade union. And so is the AECI and the ECA. Okay, that's, that's so they a fair have a negotiating licence. Dennis fell out with the AECI. Okay, we the won't go and they've broken away and they're, they're set themselves up and they claim that all sorts of members all over the place and these are the people that have been in and out of the High Court and he has no authority to speak on behalf of anybody. He has oh. no negotiating licence and nobody waits with any trade union to sit down. It would be illegal for us to sit down and negotiate with somebody that doesn't have a negotiating licence. Okay, I would, I, I would like you to listen, um, Eamon, please, as I, and afford me the, the opportunity to speak. Afford me the opportunity to speak as I have listened to you without putting in, right? Um, let's, let, let's be very clear here. You are talking about a negotiation license, and I would like to answer this question very clearly. Does the AECI or the ECA, do, are they the lawful holders of a negotiating license, or are they not? Just, yes, for, they are. just for listeners, they're the bodies representing, some <coughs> bodies representing no, collective the contractors. The and the only two bodies entitled to represent the employers in the electrical contracting industry in Ireland. Do they or do they not... Do they have a negotiating licence yes, or do they, do they not? Yes, they do. Excuse me, uh, Joe, I can forward on to your researchers uh, a okay. document I received from the Department of Trade and Enterprise that tells, that tells so what, you... So, so what point does that prove? It tells you, it tells the point that there is nobody entitled, nobody entitled to negotiate terms and conditions of wages or um, any other conditions of employment, okay. unless Sharon, they are the lawful holders of a negotiating licence. Okay, Sharon, Sharon is in Mayo, 51551. Sharon. Hi, Joe. Um, I, just, I just wanted to make the point, just, I, I'm pulling back away now from which bodies have a right okay, to that. I just want to bring it back. Anyway. You're a small, yeah. you, you are, yeah. just, just come, you're a small electrical contractor. That's right. My husband is a small electrical contractor and he has three good lads employed at the moment. And what I'm wondering about okay, is so where you, the... So, so according to my listening of, to uh -huh. the interview that Eamon Devoy did with Anya on Morning Ireland this morning, he okay. said that the likes of you held back pay increases, but you were yeah. still charging higher rates to customers. Yeah, he has hugely insulted a, a, a vast number of electrical contractors around the country. And I'm wondering where the rights of these individual electricians are, because there are, I mean, we have our minimum wage, and I, just talking about this REA, the Registered Employment Agreement, mm. we have our minimum wage in the country, fair enough. But there are a number of electricians, including my husband, the three that work for my husband, that are willing to work for less, because they understand that smaller, electrical contractors around the country in the rural areas cannot afford to compete if they are charging those ridiculous rates. I and they understand okay, that. They, and they don't have the right to say, hold on, I will work for less money. They don't have the right. The only other option is that they will lose their jobs. My husband is going so to have the, to let so go. So your, so your point is your electricians yeah. can't yeah. take a 10% cut? They can't take any even, cut. Sorry, even though they want to? Yeah. Where are their rights? We are in is a that, democracy. Is that true, Where, Eamon? Yeah, they're all queuing up to take a ten percent pay cut. No, look, that's not right. At all. Well, what would happen if right. so they can't I'll, tell they? I'll tell you this: there are a number of small electrical contractors out there, and some of them are decent people, and I'm not suggesting that they're not. Mm -hmm. But what they are doing is they're not having regard for their obligations under the law, and the law is the law. We all have to be obliged. We're all obliged to comply with the law. Now, the law in this country says that there's a registered employment agreement that regulates the terms and conditions of employment of electricians. 
And every small contractor, or even big ones, that subcontract the smaller contractors for the purpose, that send people out to, to, to hire people on lower rates to pay for competitive reasons, then somebody else comes on and hires somebody for less pay for more competitive reasons and so on. If you ignore the registered employment agreement, then there is only one rate of pay, and that is the, the €8.65 an hour that people have been talking about as the minimum rate. And that's well, not, not what this industry is about. Well, this well, industry well, is about well, standards well, and maintaining fairness, standards. Fairness, Eamon, I don't think anyone is arguing that you go from 20, what, 3.5 euro to 8 euro, is there? But that's what they're heading, because they keep, they keep reducing. They won't pay the, the, sick, the sick pay. You've heard it already. They won't pay the sick pay and the pension that they're obliged to do for their employees. They don't want to pay the increases that are due to them. They don't want to, pay, to meet the standards. And now there's a demand well, they say, well, they're saying for, for they're, employing people that well, are not electricians to do electrical well, work well, because well, they can get them well, 25% well, cheaper. They're, they're saying they can't pay and will, they will go away or out of business if they have to pay. And this, Why can't this, they pay? Electrical contractors are effectively small um, employment agencies where they hire people in to hire out the electricians to do work. And they charge per hour for each electrician. So all of our members are hired electricians by employers, small, medium and large in the electrical contracting industry. And the contractors but the only have one motive and that's profit. And they make the profit on okay, the work that Sharon, our members Sharon, do. Sharon, you have only one motive and that's profit. Yeah, and I'm th there are cowboys in every industry, but the vast majority of electrical contractors, they're just trying to make a living. I mean, I, I, very few of them are actually turning over, uh, well, making much profit at all the way things are at the moment. They're trying to make a living. And it's just, it's a disgrace that the rights of the individual well, Sharon, electricians are taken away from motive. them. Yeah, that's what he's saying, but I, I don't know what kind of what kind of you know mindset Eamon has himself. I mean, I'm getting a taste of it this morning on Morning Ireland, and now, and it's very different to, to the rest of us in the real world trying to survive and trying to keep people in jobs. I mean, I work but in isn't your profit, isn't But your Eamon, Eamon, profit? but hang on, Eamon, what do you mean by profit? Do you mean that a woman gets a wage? No, she gets so you, she earns you, money you, from the work that our members do. So the less yeah, so she pays for the members, yeah, the and, more and, she gets for charge. And, and, and in fact, so do you earn money from the work your members do. Exactly. Right, but, yeah, but you don't call it a profit. But I'm paid away. You don't, you do, yeah, but you don't, yeah, but you don't call it a profit as if it's a dirty word and there's something malodorous about Sharon because she... No, no, she, no, no, her, there's a rate in the industry, she, right? She's a, I presume she's in the business to keep going at this stage. There's, there's a, a rate of pay that's registered, right, in the state, that the minimum rate for electricians at the moment, and the registered minimum rate is 21.49 an hour, Right. And any employer that doesn't pay that is in breach of the law, and there's a few of them before being prosecuted at the moment for not paying it, right? That's the, that's the difference between the rate of and pay for electricians yeah, and all other workers in yeah, the country. Yeah, but what happens if you go out of business? Well, like, there's no answer to that, what happens if you go out of business. You're not in business. Exactly. What point are you making, Joe? I don't understand right, your but question. The point I'm making is that, on the one hand, people are talking about the minimum wage, and nobody wants to go there, Right. Uh, and I haven't heard anyone arguing to go there. On the other hand, there's this registered agreement, which people have their, their problems with over the years, and especially having been negotiated at the, health of, at the height of the Celtic Tiger, and now we're in a new environment. No, it's not negotiated at the height of the Celtic Tiger. The agreement is in place since the beginning of the state in 1922, and it's lasted that long. Look, the current rate, and the, the rate. And the recent employers rate. that have been working the with rate. us down the years, your, argument, working your, with them, your argument is the rate have observed the terms of the agreement. Your argument is, in fairness, that the rate hasn't gone up in two years. Isn't that correct? That's right. Okay, two years ago was the height of the And the rate that was paid two years ago looked back 18 months. Two, two, so and two, three and a half years ago, effectively, since our members got an increase. So that was definitely the height of the property bubble. Absolutely. Yeah, and, okay. they, and all of the contractors that were tendering okay. for work then tendered knowing that they had the obligation you not think to pay I mean, the increase under just, the registered employment Damon, do, you not, do you not think the last thing this country needs on Monday is pictures of iconic, insofar as we have any hope, iconic projects like Lansdowne Road, in terms of work, the Corrib gas fields, the Point Depot, with pickets on them? Well, now, the people they should address that question to are the people that are refusing to deal with the Labour Court recommendation, well, they're saying deal with the registered employment agreement, no, and do yeah. what they're obliged to do and, and defend, defend their, their, their industry and uh, pay the members of our union who work for them appropriately. Yeah, but they're saying the appropriate rate they're paying at the minute is 23.5 euro. You want 11% and the Labour Court have said no. The Labour Court has not said no. The Labour Court, the Labour Court has made a recommendation that the, the parties to the did, agreement, did, did not including did the, when you went, when you went to the, the Lawrence, when you went to the Labour Court, should sit down and negotiate. What, Eamon, when you went to the Labour Court for your eleven percent, did they give you the eleven percent? Didn't go for eleven percent. We went for four point nine percent. Did you? Did back they, in two thousand and eight. Did they give you the four point nine percent? 
because their argument was, we'll have to pay this, but we weren't party to but the But they didn't win the argument. But what I've done is they're frustrated 